if at the end of the day you just want to show that you're a certified diver and you're probably never going to dive again for the rest of your life, then this video is probably not for you. Hello, I am Randy Tay and I am a Paddy Course Director and Unified Team Diving Instructor Trainer. Uh, today I'd like to talk about how to choose a scuba instructor. Now this might uh, seem like a very important topic and it is. Uh, however, it all depends on what your motivation in getting scuba certified is. If at the end of the day you just want to show that you are a certified diver and you are probably never going to dive again for the rest of your life, then this video is probably not for you. Now, however, if you are looking to improve yourself or really how to become a better diver or even how to be a good diver, then watch on. And don't forget to subscribe and click that notification button. Earlier, I said that you know if you just want a scuba certification just for bragging rights, seriously, you can go to any instructor uh, and just take a three-day course, four-day course, get certified, and then you're never going to dive again. That's totally fine. Now, uh, the question is, what if you really want to get the best instruction that money can get? You really want to get an uh, instructor who is safety-minded, responsible, and who actually has passion in teaching. How do you know? So, here are the following tips that I can uh, share with you, and uh, hopefully, you know, this might help you in your journey. Uh, to become scuba certified or even look for an instructor to advance your certification. Alright, before I, I begin to discuss how to choose an instructor, uh, let's get some of the stuff out of the way first, okay? And that is the experience of an instructor. How important is the experience of an instructor? Well, the answer, it all depends. It's a yes and no, okay? And I'll tell you why. Now, uh, common logic will tell us that the more experienced an instructor is, the better an instructor he will become. But on the flip side, a more experienced instructor, someone who's been teaching 20, 30, 40 years, might become very complacent in his teaching method, right? And compare that to a brand new instructor who came up, you know, just passed his instructor, he wants to do everything right and buy the book because it's new, right? So it really depends, right? Now, and be very careful when someone brags to you that, oh, I have so much experience, I have XYZ years of experience, okay? And I will tell you right now, it's important but not that important because think about this, you can do something wrong for 50 years and still create experience. So, how do you choose an instructor? Tip number one, when you are interviewing your uh, potential instructor, you always want to ask one question, how often do you dive? That's right, how often do you dive? And if it says that, wow, I'm diving every day because I'm teaching a student, you know, because I have classes every day, that's not the instructor you want, okay? Because the only reason why he gets into the water is to teach a class. And that's not really a diver in a sense, because a good instructor must be someone who still enjoys diving. Make sense? So let me share with you a story. Um, I joined a relatively big dive center, uh, I'm not going to disclose the name of the center or, 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 or where it is, and I got to meet, you know, a lot of fellow instructors there. And on one of these days, uh, another instructor and myself have the same off day. So I actually asked him and said, hey, uh, you know, since we are both off two days from now, we want to just pack up and uh, go for a fun dive or, or something like that, you know, just dive for yourself. And this is what they tell me. Are you crazy? I dive every single day teaching water and on my off day you still want me to dive. Okay, so this is a sign that someone who no longer enjoys diving. Okay, diving becomes a duty, it becomes a chore, right? It's not fun for them anymore, right? So if you come across a student, I mean, excuse me, if you come across an instructor like that, look the other way. Tip number two. There will be some instructors who will tell you that, you know what, I am from ABC agency because, you know, we are so tough, our standards are so high and so on and so forth. 
Here's the news drop for you. I have never come across an agency that says, you know what, if you come and train with us, I'm going to kill you. It doesn't exist. So in that sense, all agencies are safe, right? And to a newcomer, they probably couldn't tell between, you know, an ABC or an XYZ uh, agency. That's not important, okay? Where the instructor is from is not important. What is more important is how do the instructor conduct your class. So don't be sold by, you know, this agency or that agency. Not important. And here's tip number three. Ask your potential instructor, how many students are there in the class? All right. Now, according to some agency standard, you can have up to eight people in a, in a over water dive. Um, now, any instructor who's worth his salt will know that this number is really a very, very uh, loose number in the sense that it all depends on many things. For example, uh, the, how comfortable the students are, what is the environment of the water on the day, right? So, but then there will always be some instructor who will be very conservative. He will tell you that no more than three, no more than four students. So, guess which one you should pick? That's right. You want to pick one who consistently teach a low ratio, okay? Meaning not more than three or four per class. All right, because not only does, is it safer for you as a potential student, but it also means that you get more attention from the instructor. Okay, next important question that you need to ask your instructor. How long will it take? Now, if someone tells you that, oh yeah, you will learn it in three days or you learn it in four days, look the other way. Okay, and here's the reason. Because all school book courses, by default, and I mean all, regardless of your agency, are performance-based, not time-based, meaning that there's no way to cap you know, how long a student will take. Some people learn faster, some people learn slower. Now, for those who will learn faster, right, they'll probably take at least the, the, the minimum number of days, which is you know, between three or four days, depending on how your, your courses are structured. Right? Now, some people actually need more time because you, you, you might take a longer time to get comfortable. So, if an instructor tells you that, oh yeah, you will learn to dive in three days or you will learn to dive in four days, look the other way, right? Because you can't put a cap. Now, conversely, you also don't want to have an instructor who tells you that, oh yeah, you know, in my class you have 40 hours of lecture and uh, you will be in a pool for at least three days and then you will have to go out and dive like X number of days, you know, trying to impress you with how long the courses are. So here's new flash for you. Okay, what we want is quality, not quantity. Alright? If an instructor really takes that long to teach a class, I am beginning to I'm beginning to doubt his efficiency. It's probably not a very efficient instructor. The next tip may or may not be practical for some of you, but you will ask, hey, is there any way I can observe a class? Uh, I can observe a, a, a how you will teach in a class. Now, when I say observing, I'm not saying that you have to jump into the pool with it, right? You can just be chilling out and see how the, the, how the instructor teach the class, okay? So what you want to look at is, are the instructions from the instructor clear, okay? Ask yourself, if I'm a student in that class right now, okay, when the instructor is giving me this instruction, am I clear about what I'm supposed to do? Or did the instructor just assume that you would know? Okay. Also, pay attention to what, how the instructor responds to any questions that might uh, that might arise. You know, is if a student start to ask questions, does the instructor feels like he's irritated, or is he very you know still very supportive, uh, still very smiley? You know, basically, he looks like he's enjoying the process. Yeah. So, and that's the kind of instructor that you want to be. Now. The second thing is when you observe, okay, see how they position the students. Are the students kneeling at the bottom or are they at least neutral buoyancy, you know, preferably not touching the ground at all, but we understand that, you know, not anyone can actually do that. Uh, and that will be another topic later, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that if the instructor placed the students on the knees on the bottom of the pool, look the other way, okay, because all the new style of teaching encourage neutral buoyancy from day one. 
Neutral buoyancy means that you will be able to control the depth you are at in the water. Now, granted, you may not be perfect. I get it. Right? First time in the water, you can't do it. That's fine. Right? But at least not kneel. Okay? Maybe just that thin tip touching. Right? Have that nice little, you know, minimize the, 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 the contact area of the bottom. Right? So look, if your instructor or your potential instructor is still teaching you kneeling, look the other way. Okay? What if uh, observing a class is not an option? Okay, simple. Just ask the question as a matter of fact, how will you make me do my skills? What? Oh, how would you make me do my skills? I don't understand. Well, what I'm trying to say is, well, what I was trying to ask is, are you going to make me new at the bottom? Or are you going to have me do some kind of neutral buoyancy as I do my skills? So if the answer is, well, new, well, of course I will make you new on the bottom, then you know that's not the instructor for you. Now the next very, very important question you want to ask is, will you fail me? Now, here's a caveat. This is actually a double agent. It's a loaded question, okay? Because it all depends on how we answer. If we answer that nobody fails in my class, we have a problem because that means that the, the bar is probably not very high. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? Yeah, nobody fails in my class. Okay, all my students graduate in three days. Well, something is wrong with that picture. Because not everyone is. You know, teaching after teaching for 12 years, I know not everyone can finish a class in 3 days or in 4 days. Some might need remedial. Now, on the flip side, if someone tells you that, oh, there are very high failure rate in my class, where 90% of my students fail, we have a problem too, because we have no idea if the student is really teaching the required skills to pass the class to meet the requirement, or is he just making things difficult to stroke his ego? You know, to tell you that, see how tough I, I am, you know, because none of my students pass. So you need to be able to draw that line, okay? Now, on the other hand, if, a, if, if an instructor will tell you as a matter of fact, well, this is a difficult class, you know, not many people succeed at their first attempt, right? But I continue to work with it. So now, we're getting somewhere. We know that this instructor is responsible. Okay, enough that making sure that all the students will meet the required uh, uh, standards in order to pass a course, but yet at the same time not throwing a curveball and, and make things difficult. Right? There's really no point to that. Next thing is you really want to look at an instructor disposition when he's teaching a class. Okay, we have already discussed. Okay, is he supportive or is he? Uh, does it look like he's irritating and you want to get out of there? Right? So, uh, these are very intangible uh, qualities that you're looking for. Right? You, you want a student who, is, who really has the interests of the student, okay? uh, who is really genuinely uh, vested in the growth of the student. Okay? Um, that's what you want to look for. Right? Now, if you're observing a class and you see that the student has a problem with a certain skill, Okay, how was he reacting? Okay, was he raising his voice? Was he getting very impatient? Was he even yelling at a student? Okay, these are the instructors that, that you really don't want to be associated with because uh, just raising your voice but saying the same thing is not teaching. Now, one other thing that you want to pay attention to is again, if you're observing a class, right? When the students are putting on their gear, right? You want to check if the instructor will enforce body checks, right? Because I've seen so many classes where after the, 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 the student just put on their, their, their stuff, put on their gear, the instructor was like, all right, let's go back here. And half the time, the students have no idea what they're doing, okay? And if you have the opportunity to go out with an instructor to an open water dive, you want to see if the instructor actually gave a prior briefing before going in, like telling the student, okay, how to enter the water, how to exit, okay, what are the skills that they'll be doing, what are they expected to see. So put yourself in the student's shoe, right? If I am going with this instructor, do I know what I'm doing? Do I know what is expected of me? Right? So 
if they have gone into the water and you're, you're questioning myself, well, it looks like I still do not know what I'm going to do on this dive, then we know that there's something missing from this instructor. Also pay attention to how the uh, students put on their gear, or rather how they treat their gear after they put it on, right? Do they still have hoses hanging around that is not clipped properly, that is not tucking properly? Are they streamlined? Is what I'm going at. If the instructor do not pay attention to these details, then he's probably not a very good diver to begin with. So well, there you go, here's my tips to choose a scuba instructor. Right? So if you have any questions, leave your comments below and I will make sure that I will answer them. Uh, so if you like the information, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button and also the notification.